I think for the last few videos, people have thought, maybe this guy just had a little episode. Maybe he's back to normal. <laughs> I honestly think I just get excited around tech. And what we have here is a product that is really exciting besides the price tag. We'll get that out of the way with first 499 USD if you're in the land down under 869 Aussie. And so it is a very expensive board, but this is the TRX40 Taichi with a 16 phase VRM that features for the PWM controller an ISL69247. And then for the MOSFETs, we're looking at ISL99390. These are 90 amp MOSFETs, by the way, so calculating a theoretical max power throughput on this board would mean that it would easily power a 64 core, and I'm guessing you can most likely overclock the 64 core to the max when it comes out on this motherboard. Speaking of the SOC and the VCCM uh, solutions there for the MOSFETs, we'll put those uh, numbers up as well. Since it does feature a 12 plus 2 plus 2 phase power design, and for the chokes, they're using 90 amp chokes and Nichicon 12K capacitors. And so the VRM on this thing is absolutely packed to the Maximano of the Maximus. That is British uh, for <laughs> this thing is going to the limits and it's still got room to breathe. So we'll go with the 3960X uh, going to that 287 watt throughput limit is a heatsink temperature of 41 degrees and then a surface temperature of 65 degrees and this is in a 28 degree ambient environment. So this VRM is just packed and then some. And the low temperatures also have to do with the fact that it's got one of the biggest heat sinks I've ever seen for a motherboard. I think actually it is the biggest heat sink I've seen on a motherboard in terms of covering the VRM. 550 grams and it features two 37 millimeter fans. So they've got active cooling on this massive heat sink. So this thing is definitely geared up towards people who maybe want to get this motherboard right now in a 24 core, and then when the 64 core gets cheaper in the future, they've got that option to switch it into this board and you're going to have absolutely fun times, uh, especially in winter if you need to heat up your room. But that being said, we're going down to the South Chip heatsink. We've got a 50 mil fan on that and the noises on all these heat sinks were absolutely fine. When I was running my tests, I couldn't even hear them. The GPU and also the CPU cooler, those fans were louder. And lastly, on that note of the VRM, when I did the efficiency tests from the wall, comparing with the same power supply that I've compared it with the TRX40 Master from Aorus and also the Creator motherboard, it came in roughly with the same uh, actual wattage usage from the wall as the Creator. And this thing does have an additional fan and it's got some RGB bling underneath the board. So in other words, it's a very efficient VRM as well as having that Maximano on top. Though that out of the way, let's take a look at what I'm gonna say is one of the best looking motherboards too and see all the rest of the features it has on board, see if there's anything wrong, and then we'll come back with a recommendation on the TRX40 Taichi, or Taichi. Say it whichever way you want it. I'm not gonna judge you. Welcome back to Tech Yes City, and the TRX40 Taichi has some pretty cool differences, at least to the other two boards that I checked out, and I'll put the link to that review up there where I checked out the Aorus Master and also the Creator, and they were two pretty good boards, very solid, didn't have really any hiccups, but this thing comes with a included HyperQuad M.2 card that requires a six pin PCIe connector, and you can have a lot more NVMe at your disposal. And to couple that in with another benefit of this board is that we've now got three 16X full speed lanes, as opposed to the other two boards that I looked at, we're going with four uh, slots of 16X, but only two of those were actual full 16X. This has got three lanes, so it's one less 16X lane, but the three of them are 16X full speed. So if you want that, this board's gonna offer that. And then you've got a little PCIe 1X all by himself, poor little guy, but he's not to worry, he's still a tough PCIe 4.0. And speaking of tough uh, PCIe 4.0, on the M.2 side of things, we've got two 4X solutions there. You can put in RAID 0 if you want to, but I mean the speed's testing them out, 4,000 megabytes per second, that's really fast on its own, and that beats PCIe 3.0 speeds. And now going through the rest of these features, we've got the heatsink down south, that's the chipset itself, the TRX40 chipset, that's going up to a maximum of 48 degrees on the heatsink when I measured the temperatures. And uh, also on the software, it was going up to about 68 degrees. And then over to the M.2 side of things, that was absorbing a little bit more of the heat. So how I do this test 
is I put the M.2 in, I spam the tests on that, the read write tests in sequential, so that loads up the M.2 really hard. And then I do the IR camera with the 2080 Ti loaded up in heaven as well at 100%. And so we saw absolutely fine temperatures here. The heat sink noise was pretty much like it is now. It's just humming in the background, really just chilling, doing its job. And so the temperatures were really good on this board in general, nothing to worry about, just like the Creator and just like the Aorus Master. Now as for connectors on this board, two five volt addressable RGBs, as well as two 12 volt RGB headers, both one each up north, one each down south, five PWM fan headers, six type A at the rear, one type C at the rear, as well as PS2, 5.1 audio solution out, SPDIF out, AKA optical out, and your Wi-Fi 6 BIOS flashback. And then you've got your Dr. Debug LED on the board with its power and reset button and clear CMOS button on the bottom right hand corner. And then for front out connectors, we've got two USB type A's, as well as one type C, and then a front USB 2, only one of those. And you don't have any Thunderbolt out as opposed to the Aorus Master and the Creator. They had more options for Thunderbolt connectivity, which this doesn't have, which is the only drawback I can find on this motherboard versus the others. But let's move on now with the audio test. We've got the Realtek 1220, but this time around with Threadripper, they've changed it so you have to go with your audio through the USB chipset and that requires an additional intermediate tree. I talked about this in the other review that I did a little bit, but basically this intermediate tree, uh, for what it's worth, has not really had any effect on latency. And also the solution that they've implemented here today is absolutely fine. We're looking at a minus 2.3 decibel drop off from zero to 10 Hertz after 10K, 0.1 decibel drop off, really flat line. And also for the distortion, that's looking really good too. And then for cross door, we've got minus 80 dB, which is not the best I've seen. Where some of the worst stuff I've seen is about minus 60 dB. And at that stage, you can hear footsteps coming in your other ear, which is not what you want while you're gaming, or of course, listening to music. In terms of channel balance, left and right were pretty much perfectly balanced. And then we had for the microphone in, that was plus 30 dB at 50 volume. That's where there was no noise coming in. But after that noise did start to creep in aggressively. And so there doesn't look like there's noise suppression on board this mic input, but uh, you wanna keep it around plus 30 dB, 50 volume and under, which is really good because this is a step up from the usual plus 20 dB, 50 volume that I recommend on most motherboards. And now the last thing to talk about with this board is the overclocking. It's really simple, really easy. The ASRock BIOS is set up to be simple, yet offer all those features that you would want. Personally though, I am critiquing their RGB software, which they've taken away. I used to like having that in the BIOS itself, so I didn't have to install any of their polychrome software within Windows. But other than that, you can save your profiles, you can enable Precision Boost Overdrive 2 to get some extra performance if you wanna up the wattage limit, or of course, if you wanna manually overclock and try your luck that way. But for what it's worth, I do find these Zen 2 CPUs are pretty much sweet spotted out of the box. So you won't have to do a whole lot of tuning. You just whack it in, whack your XMP profiles in, and you've pretty much got a really efficient system, especially for the amount of cores these CPUs have. And now it's time for me to sum things up for you guys if you're in the market for one of these boards, which let's face it, it is a very expensive motherboard, but I do know a few of my friends have gone out and got the uh, 24 core from AMD. They think that's the sweet spot CPU to get. So one of these boards that's, I guess, coming in, dare I say, at entry level pricing, even though 500 USD is a very expensive purchase. These boards, have, ASRock have pretty much nailed it. Like there's not one thing I can really critique about this board other than it not having Thunderbolt support. But other than that, it's just perfect. Everything, the VRM, the temperatures, that heat sink that they've put on this thing, 550 grams with two quiet fans, that is just going to make sure you've got really good cooling and you don't have to add or jerry-rig any extra fans in your case over the VRM. This thing's already doing a good job of that. The Southbridge heatsink and the aesthetic looks really good. You've got that RGB bar underneath, which is a little extra add-in. The onboard audio is phenomenal. The Wi-Fi 6 speeds, you've got Bluetooth 5. You've got the LAN as well as a 1G and also a 2.5G solution. And when we tested out those speeds, they were absolutely fine. And then we've got the M.2 support as well as the added M.2 card for four additional M.2 drives. So you can have six in total working on this board if you wish to. So maybe say hello to the future of your local NAS where you've just got this very small case with six NVMe drives loaded in and you could have this massive CPU with a good server and also PCIe 4.0 to boot. 
So maybe this is the way of the future in terms of small servers that pack a massive amount of power, but uh, definitely Threadripper and the TRX40 Tai Chi together go really well. And this is something that ASRock's done this time around with these boards. I like the creator, but if you're after an aesthetic and also a VRM with more phases on board, I think it's got an extra four phases. So technically it's got about 50% extra total maximum grunt than the creator has, then this board is definitely going to be for you. And so the Tai Chi is an absolute beast. In my previous uh, showdown, I picked the creator over the Aorus Master, but after spending time with the Tai Chi, I'd pick that over the creator. It's just got such a gorgeous aesthetic. The VRM uh, they've implemented with those fans, I absolutely love that heat sink. It's the first time I've seen a heat sink that would actually be a consideration for me to purchase a motherboard over another based on how good they've implemented that Northbridge heatsink on this motherboard. The one thing the creator does have going for it is that 10G Aquantia on board NIC. And that's very important if you want something that's integrated without having to whack on an independent solution, which I do plan on going X570 actually anyway, not TRX40. And that's one thing I am going to stress. Do you need the extra cores of Threadripper? Do you need all these extra PCIe lanes and all this connectivity. I personally don't. Anyway, love reading your thoughts and opinions. Let us know in the comments section below. But speaking of questions, we've now got the question of the day from Black Ack, and they ask, yo, what about the 3500X, man? Do you think it's better for the money than the 3600? And I think it depends on what you're doing. If you're just gaming, and especially if you're going with a mid-range graphics card, like a 5700, or you're going with a 1660 Super, then yeah, the 3500X is going to be really good. I think it's going to be better for the money than the 3600. Of course, you've got to look at, do you need to do a bit of video editing? You're going to need those extra threads in the next year or whatever. Then the 3600X is probably going to be a better purchase. But for just gaming and those mid-range graphics cards, 3500X is a really good buy. Hope that answers your question. And with that aside, I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. And if you're still watching this far and you're enjoying the content, you know what to do, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.